we would like to play. Oh, hello, I am waving with my Wiimote. <laughs> I am VD of VD's Gaming Videos, and the next collection, or physical games collection episode, is of course the Nintendo Wii. The Nintendo Wii originally coming out in Australia in December 2006. That's about, that's about 16 years ago today. It remains to this day the only console that I ever got on a midnight launch, in contrast to the other systems which I got usually quite a way after their original release. The Nintendo Wii excited me from the moment I first heard about it, which probably back then would have been known as or co-named the Revolution. The Nintendo Wii intrigued me with its sort of motion controls, its interesting new library of games, and of course, its virtual console games. A lot of retro games on there, which, to be honest, so games like Chrono Trigger and Ocarina of Time, I probably actually played more than the new games. Still, the Wii had some very interesting titles, which I am going to showcase for you with my physical collection. Uh, how many have I got? 16. Yeah, 16. So I thought I'd talk about my Nintendo Wii collection today. Uh, let's get started. Now I'm going to start with, of course, the game that got packaged with the Nintendo Wii, so anyone who got a Nintendo Wii surely didn't go without a copy of Wii Sports. So, what is there to say about Wii Sports that sort of hasn't already been said? This was a game, or more to the point, series of five sports games that was not only a showcase for the Wii, but was also quite an interesting take on motion controls and also involving the family. Yes, quite a few of my family who didn't necessarily play games got up to play games like baseball, bowling, golf, tennis, and boxing. Uh, Wii Sports uh, is a decent game. I spent quite a bit of time on it um, and certainly, you know, shook the Wiimote around and maybe got a tiny bit of exercise. It's not recommended that this should be your exercise regime, but it can help a little bit. Certainly any one of the sports games is better than the other, and, and it also depends on how many players you have and the options you use. So like tennis, for example, your character moves automatically while you just shake the tennis record around with a Wiimote. Uh, baseball can be a little bit uh, just... And boxing, you know, it's a bit too extraneous, but hey, that's kind of a point. And of course, bowling, uh, so many people I play with got strikes on that game. And also bowling has, um, I've seen it been played a bit more on Twitch. You know who you are if you're watching. So this is not among my most played or most liked Wii games, to be fair, but I still had fun with it. And if it got the family, the non-gamers into playing video games, honestly, I'm happy for this to be in my collection, which is mandatory for the Nintendo Wii anyway. Yeah, while Wii Sports was a fairly decent game, there were other games that weren't, well, for mostly once in my physical games collection, we come across games that I have that, okay, I'm probably a bit too embarrassed to get. Especially if I could have avoided this game and got a second Wii mode. Yes, I am talking, of course, about Wii Play. So this game, I really have not played much of it. To be honest, um, the only time I do remember playing it was when on the launch day, well right after the launch day that I got the Nintendo Wii playing this with a couple of friends, and we played it for oh, an hour or two or something, but after that I didn't really go back to it. And even getting footage for this video, I, I almost couldn't stand it. And, and honestly, if you play this game, you probably know why. Now, to be fair, some of the motion functions in this became staples of many Wii games later on, which is really cool. And there are one or two, maybe three-ish mini games in this that are actually kind of fun. And you can try and get medals if you want. But let's be real here. The majority of mini games in this are not worth playing for more than a minute or two if you can. And why did I just not get the Wii Mode by itself? and save money and not get this game. So here this sits in my collection, probably gathering dust. Well, not, well, it's still in decent condition, but anyway, there's not much to say about this game. If you've not got this game, you're probably not missing out on much as long as you have more than one Wiimote handy for those multiplayer games. Well, the next one isn't really a multiplayer game, but 
Even though I had mini game compilations, I needed something on the Nintendo Wii to sink my teeth into a game I was looking forward to for, oh, how many years was it? Okay. Of course, it is none other than The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. This is the Wii version. Ah, Twilight Princess. It's sort of like a myth or a legend, really. Especially considering that this was the game we were supposed to get on the GameCube around the time Wind Waker came out. I mean, this did come out of the GameCube, and it did also come out, come out of the Wii U as well as an HD version. I've got neither of those, though. So we saw a promo for a realistic sort of looking Zelda. Wind Waker came out, and people were like, well, what happened to that other one? Well, this is kind of a result considering that it's also sort of similar in its structure and gameplay and stuff to Ocarina of Time on the Nintendo 64. It's because of things like that, as well as its relative ease and its overly long and things like that, that it's probably not necessarily my favourite Zelda, even some of the pacing in it, especially towards the beginning is off. But I will admit, once I got past that opening section or whatever, the game really started to grab me, and I enjoyed going through what are probably some of the best dungeons in a 3D Zelda. I didn't necessarily mind the Wolf League sections, although I can understand for once they were forced on the player were probably irritating to some. And really, it's just good old classic 3D Zelda. And also, this one, you do have the Wiimote and motion controls, which, while not necessarily perfect, possibly not even close to, was still pretty good. And trust me, the best way to play was to really shape the Wiimote, because you can sort of go like this, to do it with this game and I guess a good many other Wii games, but really, if you're going up against the darkness of Hyrule, and a good story I might add, and Link, Wolf Link, Midna, an absolutely great character, and fighting those enemies and saving the land of Hyrule, you really had to shake it to have fun. As well as aim around your bow and arrow and hook shots and things like that. So, probably not my necessarily my favourite Zelda game, and it's not also but not because it's a bit of a dark game. There's actually some light quirky elements in this as well, even though this can be a bit of a dark game, which also is, could have used maybe a bit more colours as well. But I still really have fond memories of this game, and even playing the game for a bit to get footage for this video was only a reminder as to why this is a grand adventure. Another game I was excited for when hearing about the Nintendo Wii's, well maybe not launch, or at least the lineup of games we were coming out, was a game that was also from one of my favourite series, Metroid. This is Metroid Prime Free Corruption. So you want to pretend to be Samus and aim your Wiimote of a screen and shoot space pirates and Metroid of the like and explore these vast alien worlds? Well, you can essentially do that here. I remember being amazed the first time I play this and actually be able to use the Wiimote to essentially go about the direction I could go in and, you know, interact with the ship and other things and use the grapple beam and stuff. Um, to be fair, of course, the motion controls in some of those functions are perfect, but still, it was an absolute blast to play. And still, this is a uh, Metro Prime that is kind of similar to the first two games to a degree. You've got vast worlds to explore, puzzles to solve, enemies and creatures to fight, and it's also got a decent story as well, even though story-wise it also is a bit... has a bit more characters in it that also makes things a bit less... There's a bit less isolation of this game in contrast to other Metroid games, but the majority of your time you're still on your own as Summers fighting the phase on corruption and just trying to figure out what the heck is going on and overcoming evil and stuff. This is a great game that I'm not sure if it's my second favourite, because yeah, Metroid Prime 1, favourite game of all time and all that, uh, because Metroid Prime 2 has grown, over, grown on me over time, but I still really like this game and anytime I play it, Hmm, maybe I should play it now, but no, we've got to finish this collection video. The universe is counting on us. No, no, this is a great game. Metroid is one of those series that allows you to go off into space. But who knew you would go travelling through space with a plumber in an anticipated game for the Wii? I'm not sure if this was one of my most anticipated games ever or whatnot, but I'm glad I picked up a copy of Super Mario Galaxy! Why did I talk like that? Ah, uh, Super Mario Galaxy. What is there to say about you that hasn't already been said? Except we didn't predict back when this was released in 2007 that the term Galaxy would feature in the trailer for the new Mario movie? The new Mario movie that's coming out in 2023 next year? Okay, let's go back to 2007. 
where this game was pretty much highly acclaimed and I mostly agree with that. This is a great 3D Mario game that I guess to an extent was better than Sunshine, although I still like Sunshine, with the motion controls, the level design, the transformations. This is quite simply a great 3D Mario game. To be fair, um, it certainly is fairly easy and linear as well. So it did sort of start the changes to the 3D Mario after 64 and Sunshine were more open and stuff. And I guess to a small extent, the motion controls aren't perfect either, but no, the motion controls came really close in this one. And this is also a really interesting game in terms of its design and innovation. Like some of the levels and enemies and stuff in this are really cool. I remember the last time I played this, mostly to get some footage for my video game music lists, you know, to go to the Beach Ball Galaxy. Ooh, it's summer. Should go to the Beach Ball Galaxy. Anyways, I was still pleasantly surprised at how good this game is. Plus, you can sort of play as Luigi and also get a second Wii mode out to help you as well. So yeah, Zelda and Metroid are solo player experiences, but not necessarily this one. But yeah, this is a fantastic game and one of my favorites on the Wii. Now this game is one of my favorites on the Wii, or maybe more to the point was past tense. I did play a little bit of it again just to get footage for this video and I almost couldn't put it down. It gave me such fond memories of all the well, seeming delays of waiting for it to come and all the characters that were... Oh, I, I sort of I went off tangent there because I was reminiscing, of course, about the character-filled fighting crossover game Super Smash Bros. Brawl. So, hey, did you anticipate all those moments of waiting for those new video game characters? No, 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 don't tell me. I haven't watched the trailers yet. I don't want any spoilers. Yeah, but Solid Snake. Sorry, I had to uh, reference uh, an Arlo video there. But that's also recent. Going back to 2008 again, we have the third main Super Smash Brothers game. And honestly, this is still a pretty good game. Even though in retrospect, well, it may have been overtaken by or was overtaken by Smash for Wii U and of course Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It's also not as well recognized in the competitive communities. It got modded, I think, to Project M or something where it was essentially the same game, but as fast as Melee on the GameCube. And even there are a few tiny issues I have with it, which to some extent couldn't be remedied. I mean, the online, when it was online back then, was pretty rudimentary. And the subspace emissary uh, was fine, although the Great Maze, I did get surprisingly and frustratingly lost in. And I guess other Smash games were played more than this one, maybe. But hey, when you have still a great Smash game with surprising additions such as Solid Snake and even Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic can actually fight against Mario in this game. And of course, you've got, you know, Link, Warrior, Pikachu, Samus, and of course, Meta Knight. Oh, this is still a pretty darn good game. It's, so it may not necessarily be the best Smash Bros. game, or maybe to you it might be. This is still a pretty darn good game, and in some ways, it features some of the most content in a Smash Bros. game. And at its core, it's still a Smash Bros. game, and you cannot get more fun and more nostalgic and more into Nintendo than this. Now, I'm not sure if any of you asked when I did my GameCube video, or at least I clarified it. You had Resident Evil Zero. Where was Resident Evil 1 Remake? Did you have that? I do, but it's on the Nintendo Wii. So yeah, this is it. This is the Resident Evil 1 Remake, which is essentially a port of the one released on the GameCube. Also titled Resident Evil Archives. This is essentially, well, it's a port of Resident Evil Remake, but with slightly different controls, really. So if you played the GameCube version of this, you could pretty much, you know, sleepwalk for it, or maybe you couldn't because it's that scary. But still, the Resident Evil 1 Remake, I would probably have to say is my second favorite Resident Evil game in the series behind four, which is quite a call, call to make. I mean, maybe two is good, maybe three is good, but no, no, this is a game that 
really uh, got me into the series after playing for this is where i realized what the static camera angles were about the interesting you know haunted mansion the puzzles the two different characters to play as this is a really really good survival horror game there are a few tiny i guess frustrating moments in it really and of course it has the ink ribbons and that which means just sometimes just sometimes i have to be in the mood right mood to play this game uh, in terms of how much time i have to spend on it but it doesn't matter my friend gave me this alongside resident evil zero of a gamecube so i guess he kept his gamecube version Thank you, my friend, for giving me what ended up becoming one of my favorite entries in one of my favorite horror game series, Resident Evil Remake. A really, really good game. If you have it on the GameCube, you don't necessarily need to get this version, although the HD version of this did sort of change up the camera angle and stuff a bit and how it gets had achievements and that. I actually don't have that physical or digital, but if I ever want to play Resident Evil 1 Remake, I got it right here. This next game is essentially a second-hand copy, and I guess I took my time in getting this game, and I honestly don't know why. This is a sequel to one of the great games I already mentioned. This is Super Mario Galaxy 2! Uh, I don't think Mario even cast me in a Mario movie. Anyway. So, if you can see the price tag, sort of, in which Wii games were mostly about 100 Australian dollars, this was essentially a second-hand copy that was just a bit, I guess, cheaper than it would have been originally. But I didn't mind getting it back then, and I, yeah, I don't mind it now, because this is a great sequel to a great game. It's probably not necessarily as innovative or revolutionary as the first game, but some of the level designs and transform transformations and all that stuff, again, are just extremely cool to play with. Plus, you have Yoshi in what is probably a better implementation of Mario riding him in 3D than Sunshine, at least to me. And especially, this one of the first game was the one I spent the most time on in co-op with uh, my dad. Yeah, dad was a player too in this. I think he was kind of surprised by how well I did, but also had to have a patience for times I would fall off and die, and also during the extra challenges like clone Mario's chasing you and stuff, which was also in the first game. I forgot to say that. So maybe I do prefer the first game a little over this one, but I did consider this one of the best games I played from the decade it came out, and it's still a great game, another great Wii game. Another game that was released in the decade of Super Mario Galaxy 2 was a game which was pretty much motion control central for an established franchise. It is none other than The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. This also has a soundtrack, uh, a 25th anniversary collection of orchestra music for the game, and there's the game itself. Now, this uh, game got packaged in a special box when I pre-ordered it. I don't necessarily uh, have the box anymore, at least from what I can tell, but the good reason for that was, and I'll have to put this game down for a second to explain it to you. Actually, no, I don't. It came packaged with this. This is the only uh, Wii Motion Plus that I have amongst all my Wii accessories, and for good reason, because this is the only way you can play The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, and it's still, it's a pretty pretty cool way. I still use it, and of course it's got that sort of Zelda golden look about it, and of course if I ever want to boot this up, this is all I can use to play it. At least the Wii version that is, I don't have the Switch one. But the question is, should I get the Switch one? Do I like this game? Well, yes. I, I think this is a, a good game. Certainly, much of the problems I have with Twilight Princess sort of carried over to Skyward Sword. Namely, it's really long length, and of course the slow pacing with the tutorials and stuff at the beginning. I didn't necessarily have a problem with the motion controls. I guess some people did, and I'm not sure exactly why it should be like universally good or universally bad and of course the motion controls were quite a point of contention with not just us game players and game reviewers but also professional critics as well to the point where a controversial review of this game got a lower score than most so and also it also stated about review that this game is oh it's too similar to ocarina of time and stuff um i partially disagree with that it had some interesting design ideas in terms of 
the stuff outside the dungeons really almost being like a dungeon itself or an interesting sort of level. The problem though is that that stuff outside the dungeons I sort of didn't necessarily enjoy as much because it felt like I was sort of doing the 3D platforming without the platforming that would end up featuring in Breath of the Wild. And also there were only three essentially main levels repeated three-ish times plus there was a sort of empty sky level, even though Skyloft, the sort of main town was great to explore. But that's the other thing I forgot to mention about Twilight Princess before. I do find the overworld in that a bit empty in a similar way to Ocarina of Time. But anyway, Sky with the Sword. Well, look, maybe it was by this time uh, the Twilight Princess, as much as I liked it, sort of had that fatigue that settled in and I enjoyed this game, but I was like, Mm, can we do better with Zelda? Which I sort of got with Breath of the Wild, but that's for another collection video. But Skyward Sword is still a pretty good game, and I see that they did remedy some of the issues such as Fi or the, you know, the tutorials and stuff in the Switch version, even though there was that amiibo controversy, which I'm still not happy about. But at its core, this is still a good Zelda game, and it also features some really good dungeons again, and even some of the stuff as repeated as it was, depending on where you were in the game, was still kind of challenging and fun, and it also had a pretty good story to me, featuring a lovely relationship between Link and our title princess. And even when I've gone back to replay it, being aware that I may have had some problems with it, such as the lighting on my laptop. Hello. Um, yeah, anyways, it's, this is still a pretty good game. So it's not my favorite Zelda or 3D Zelda in that, but I still do like it. And coming back to it, again, I'm reminded as to why. Maybe I should get a Switch version. Let me know in the comments what you think. Now, this is a game that was on the GameCube. And I think the general consensus was it was hard to get. I didn't want it badly, otherwise I probably could have got it close to its release. But it generally was hard to find, and I think to an extent it was hard to find on the Wii as well. It is the new Play Control version of Pikmin 2. So, after enjoying the first Pikmin, I had to try and play, or at least get Pikmin 2 eventually, and I managed to get this in a shop. It was a bit challenging to find it though, but I found it. And this is essentially Pikmin 2 of a GameCube, but with the Wiimote controls. Um, I actually do not have Pikmin 1 on the Wii, so this is essentially my only experience with those sort of uh, changed Pikmin controls. But hey, this is still Pikmin 2, and it is a good game. I've not got everything in it, though. Um, I got pretty far in it, though, and for good reason. It actually doesn't really have that day limit pressure that the first game had even though you still have a day and night cycle and you go into dungeons where time stands still and you have to make sure you don't lose all of your Pikmin. That's the other thing. I mean, some of the dungeons in this I honestly found a little bit too frustrating, I guess, especially the bottom of those pit ones and I guess some of the enemies and that. And I guess I preferred maybe the above ground stuff. But hey, I played Pikmin 1 before this, but this is still a pretty darn good game and maybe I'll actually give it a proper go because I still need to review this, I guess, and also probably play Pikmin 3, both versions, before Pikmin 4 comes out, which I'm really looking forward to. I also did play a little bit of multiplayer on this as well, just a little bit. So there's a little bit of real-time strategy, sort of puzzle game stuff that you could do with someone else. So this is Pikmin 2, and it's a pretty good sequel to the first game. I think in some ways it's probably better than the first game. The AI and stuff is better. I think I just need to get all the stuff in it though with the help of the new Pikmin as well, the purple and white Pikmin. What new Pikmin will be in Pikmin 4? We'll hopefully find out soon enough. But in the meantime, Pikmin 2, good game, play it. It was this point on that pretty much I think the Wii was superseded by the other consoles and I mostly went retro hunting or looking at shops for secondhand games and all that stuff. The reason I got this game was mostly so I could well, I guess record it. And also because the digital version of it on the Wii U eShop, I guess, took up too much space. But I did say before that I had this game on the GameCube. Yeah, can you guess what it is? It is Resident Evil 4 Wii Edition. The disc... Ah. <laughs> I had the GameCube manual inside because I had written notes in it that I still use for the game. It's still essentially the same game, but with the motion controls. Uh, the disc is currently inside my Wii U because I am finishing off the Vidi Plays project of it, 
go to my secondary channel for that. And really, there's not much to say about this game that I haven't already said or hasn't really already been said before. This is probably the best version of Resident Evil 4, though I still hold great regard for the GameCube version because that's how I got into it and in the series. Yeah, it's essentially the same game, but you have the Wii motion controls where you aim or you can even shake the knife around. It also features the additional content that was in essentially the PS2 versions onwards. So the GameCube did not have separate ways and stuff like that. Well, now it does in this version. So usually when I play Resident Evil 4, I boot up this version of the game and it's still Resident Evil 4. It's still a great game. And that's all that needs to be said about it. Again, another pre-owned game, a game that I just for whatever reason didn't get on release. Uh, and I've not necessarily played a lot of it yet, but I could still talk about it. This is Donkey Kong Country Returns. So I've only done most of the first world. And I almost found it hard to put this uh, game down. I mean, there are some problems I do kind of have with it. I mean, it just feels like a modern Donkey Kong Country, right? And it also has, you know, the motion controls that every Wii game seemed to have. You had to wonder why I do that. And some of this game is actually fairly hard. Even from the first world, you can tell that. But this is actually a pretty interesting and compelling 2D platformer. Some of the changes it makes to the original game are kind of cool in terms of you know, Donkey being the prime character and Diddy following in to help with jumps. And of course, having our heart system. You only get to control Rambi in this game? Oh, I wanted to control the other animal buddies. Although Squawks helps out with looking for puzzle pieces and all that stuff. Yeah, the extra collectibles and stuff can be quite hard to find. And even getting from point A to point B is hard. And I imagine even Tropical Freeze, which I, spoiler alert, don't have at this point, is probably harder if that's even possible. But still, Donkey Kong Country, well, at least the original trilogy on the SNES and stuff, I really do like. And I'm not sure if this measures up to those ones. And I also do not have a 3DS version of this game, which I've heard is a bit easier. But this is still Donkey Kong Country and motion controls or not, frustrating difficulty or not, this was this is still a pretty solid game for what I've played so far. And I anticipate how much more difficult it is going to get. I don't have someone else to do the co-op play with me though. This next game that I got pre-owned, or at least I went, I found while going retro hunting, was a game that I sort of heard a bit about and I thought, oh, that sounds like an intriguing game. And I thought I'd get a copy of it. It is a game that is sort of obscure. So it's not a Mario game, it's not a Donkey Kong game, it's not a Zelda game, it's not a Metroid game. It is Zack and Wiki Quest for Barbara, Barbara's Treasure. Oh, army mateys, I have not played much of this game. That was not a very good pirate voice. Let's just talk about the game. So what intrigued me about this game that I managed to get it for? Well, it seemed to have some of the most innovative uses of the Wiimote and for some really interesting, poor, almost point and click puzzle gameplay. For what I've played so far of it is pretty interesting and fun. Some of the puzzles can be quite tricky to figure out, especially if you want to get a good score or rating or whatever. So really, this is a very interesting, you know, sort of adventure puzzle game. And I mean, you don't have to like be a fan of, you know, the whole Pirates theme to, you know, like it or anything. But yeah, I just need to play more of this game and see if I can get those brain teasers working solver puzzles. Um, but yeah, for my point of it, uh, you should probably check this game out. Uh, it's an interesting, obscure Nintendo Wii game that you ought to check out. This was also, I believe, also released on the Wii U eShop as well but I'm sure that takes up so much space in contrast to this physical game find. It is a treasure, perhaps. So do we call it football or soccer in this game? I don't know, but we have Mario and his friends playing it. It is Mario Strikers Charged. Mario Strikers Charged Football. Right, get the title right. I was compelled to uh, get a copy of this game after playing a little bit of it with a friend, and it's certainly, or if it's anything like if you played the Switch version, it's certainly that really chaotic, over-the-top sort of Mushroom Kingdom style football slash soccer game. And with decent uh, Wii controls, they take a bit of time to get used to it first. And I get the sense it can also be quite tricky in the later cups and challenges and all that sort of thing as well. Which to an extent the Switch version did too. I guess I ended up playing the Switch version a bit more than this game because I got this one sort of not long before that came out. But at the same time, this could be somewhat better in terms of content than the Switch version as well. But it's still, um, you know, Mario soccer and football and it is kind of similar to what the Switch version, I guess, ended up being. So maybe I need to play a bit more of this game. Cannot play it online, though, because the Wi-Fi connection is gone and all that. 
Uh, but I heard it was good when it did work in the first place. And this is still a pretty fun uh, football slash soccer game, and it's Mario and company doing it. What more could you want? Yeah, the next game on the list, and we're getting close to the end, is Kirby's Epic Yarn. I've only played a tire bit of this game to make sure it would work, and it was again another one of those retro game finds. So I really don't have uh, much to say about it other than I do like the art style, and it's of course essentially 2D Kirby, and you can't go on with that. So yeah, if that's all I can really say about this game, I do need to uh, play it more. I'm trying to think of a good wool or yarn joke here, but I cannot think of one. But don't worry, we've got one more game left to go. This game, you'd think I would have also got during the Wii's life as well, but I mostly ended up playing with, with friends. And maybe it's been overtaken by the later entries in the series or something. But hey, I thought I'd just get a copy of Mario Kart Wii. Now I don't actually have the steering wheel add-on accessory for this that you can put the Wii mode inside. And to be fair, pretty much any time I play this, I go with as little motion controls as possible anyway, although I guess the sense is, is that the Wiimote holding on its side like that, hang on, that's not the Wiimote, um, is somewhat accurate as well. And hey, this is still a Mario Kart with quite an interesting fan base if the online play, or at least the online play is kept by servers, by kept up by people who still actually keep this game going. This is still a Mario Kart game at its core. And it's a pretty uh, fun game from what little of it I've actually played for myself because I did spend more time playing this multiplayer with friends doing LAN and stuff. The thing is though, in single player, the computer can be quite, oh, geez. I, I know this as a typical Mario Kart thing to have the computer AIs going up against you. And maybe they turned it down a bit more in the entries after this, but still, this is still a Mario Kart game at its core, and well, <laughs> I mean it also had to have the word Wii in the title. It also may not necessarily be my favorite Mario Kart game, I guess maybe 8 took over now, but this is still pretty good, and it's another good showcase for the Nintendo Wii. Well, Nintendo Wii, well, it's mostly in a cupboard at my parents' place, and we had got out a few times for kids to play with it. So pretty much I can record mostly in HD via the Wii U, so I can uh, play these games and record and all that stuff. And also that the Wii that I got also is backwards compatible with GameCube games, except for the Game Boy Player. Well, anyway, that was my way of also playing GameCube games as well. So the Nintendo Wii, I do have fond memories of. It did certainly have a lot of, I guess, shovelware including infamously bad titles like Ninja Bread Man, one of the best games ever made. No it's not. From what I've heard anyway, I've not even played it and I doubt I would get a game like that from my collection. And there are certainly quite a few Wii games, I mean good ones like I guess Fire Emblem and stuff, which are expensive. But whether I got those on release and the pre-owned games, I got those for a good price and I still play these games. I mean, I said before that some of them I do need to play or replay. And the Nintendo Wii, well, I did again play more, I guess for virtual console, a bit more than those games, but I still have fond memories of playing them. And I also do have, speaking of the Wii U, a few digital Wii games from the Wii U eShop. Not as many, so it's going to be a very quick montage to end this video. And speaking of the content of this video, do you have a Nintendo Wii? What games do you have in your collection? And um, are you going to get any Nintendo Wii games for Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate? Wait, the Nintendo Wii is an old console video, but who knows? Maybe you might get a Nintendo Wii retro game hunting whatever for Christmas or something. Yeah, why don't you do that? Why don't you go get a Nintendo Wii for someone and get those games for it? Well, not all 16, maybe one or two or three of them. What games are your favorites and on the Nintendo Wii? Which games do you have in your collection? Sound off in the comments and have a good day or night or whatever it is. I'm waving you by and let's actually use this Wiimote to turn on the digital games montage. Let's -a go! I promise I want to do the Mario voice. Power. 
Bring up. The Nintendo Wii. The Nintendo Wii will. The Nintendo Wii will each and. Blah. That's the name. You know.